Thank you for joining me for the Me and White Supremacy Virtual Pilgrimage. It's week 25. My name is the Reverend John Borthwick, and I'm the minister here at St. Andrews in Guelph. And it's been a, an amazing journey to be able to share the material from Leila Saad's book, Me and White Supremacy. And um, I've been sharing that with my congregation for the past 24 weeks um, with a break here and there. And now we're on to just the last few weeks of this uh, journey and the, the chapters are much shorter and the reflections are probably much more significant and much more powerful. But for the sake of sharing this with my congregation and um, to limit my own personal reflections to layer those on, uh, I'd really like to just share essentially a couple of the key points from Layla this week in her chapter on you and your family and then just share the questions that she asks because those questions certainly touch me deeply and I think they'll resonate with you as well. She opens this chapter by saying that, of course, family, everyone has their stuff. Every family has its dynamics. Every family has its challenges. Um, but she reminds us as we do this work that's not necessarily easy. She reminds us for especially those who carry white privilege um, that BIPOC doesn't get to take a break just because their family is different or complex or hard or challenging. BIPOC still has to speak about racism and, and the work of anti-racism in the mix. So it's something for those who identify as white to think about when we choose not to engage in conversations around race and racism in our own family systems. So I'd invite you just to think about these questions that she asks because they certainly point to me and my relationships with my family and extended family. So the first question is, how do you feel about speaking up about racism and white supremacist beliefs and actions to your family members? Number two, how have you excused or ignored your family members' racist behaviors because addressing them seems too difficult and you want to keep the peace. Three, how have you excused your elders' racism because they are from another time? Four, if you are a parent, how do you speak to your children about racism beyond we don't see color? How early did you or will you speak to your children about racism and white privilege? And how early did your parents or caregivers speak to you about racism and white privilege? Five. What racist beliefs have you internalized from your family? Six. To what extent do you place white comfort over anti-racism in your family? Seven. What are some of the ways in which you can begin to have deeper conversations with your family about racism? Eight. How do you allow perfectionism to get into the, in the way of having racial conversations with your family? And nine, in what ways do you or can you organize your family to show up for BIPOC in your communities? Not from a place of white saviorism, but rather by volunteering at or donating to anti-racist movements and organizations being led by BIPOC in your communities. I'd invite you to think about these questions and if you can, share them with your family. Share these questions as maybe an opener to having an important conversation about race, white privilege, anti-racism, and the entire theme of this book, Me and White Supremacy. Thank you for joining me for this virtual pilgrimage, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.